Well, even though it was a good game, it was bound to happen at one point. So with that being said, let's do a review. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Drew, better known as RockChuck01, and today, yesterday, whenever you're watching this, the 19th ranked Kansas Jayhawks, and let that sink in for a bit, but the 19th ranked Kansas Jayhawks played for the third straight week in Memorial Stadium to face off against the 17th ranked TCU Horn Frogs for ESPN College Game Day. With both teams being undefeated, one had to give, and unfortunately, Kansas suffered their first loss of the season by a final score of 38 to 31. Yeah, I mean, give both teams credit. They played their hearts out, and especially KU in this game because Jalen Daniels went down with a shoulder injury on his throwing arm. And my thought is that he might be out for the season. However, according to KU football, that might be a 48 hour decision. So on Monday or Tuesday, depending, we should know. But yeah, there was a lot of questionable things that happened in this game as well. Most notably with the refs. Um, it probably wasn't displayed well on television, but if you were in the stadium and people can agree with me on this one, is that on a few kickoffs that KU kicked to TCU, there was times they returned it. There was times that uh, it wasn't returnable. However, the refs would advance the ball five extra yards and give TCU better field position. And that is uncalled for. They need to look at the tapes again because it happened multiple times and it was just ridiculous. Also, the game went down to a couple of questionable calls uh, that went in favor of TCU and ultimately they won the game. I can't control it, but there is a few that they need to be looking at it. But with the ref thing out of the way, uh, there was good things that happened and there were a lot of bad things that happened. So with that being said, for those of you who do not know, I get positives and negatives about the game. I give a player the game and a player who needs to improve. So without further ado, let's do this. As I change profile shots, I want to give you guys a fair warning that I will be looking off to my right a lot because that is where my laptop is and I have all my notes and takes on there. So bear with me, but let's get started with the positives. And the first positive that I have is KU's offense. Holy cow. Uh, after having like one of its worst offensive performances of the season, lo and behold, KU put up, I believe it's third 500 yard game of the season as KU had 540 total yards, which includes 351 passing yards and 189 rushing yards for the entire game. Another key factor was that KU's defense did a lot better than I thought they would because TCU's offense is the second leading offense in terms of yardage per game, which they averaged like 550. And KU did their job by holding them under their average and KU ended up outgaining them. Uh, TCU had 452 yards, 308 through the air and 144 on the ground. So defense did its best to do its job. KU won the yards per play battle as they finished with 7.5 to TCU 7.1. They won the first the first down battle. Gosh, I can't speak. But they won that battle 22 to 21 and actually converted a fourth down more than TCU did as KU was one for three. TCU was 0 for 1. Also, we didn't punt very much in the game as we only had three punts to TCU's four. So another good thing. I mean, other than that, those were the key ones is that we outgained TCU in this game by almost 100 yards. We held their offense under average. So both the offense and the defense were doing their job. So with that said, those are the positives. Now, moving on to the negatives, even though we forced TCU to have two turnovers of their own, KU had two boneheaded turnovers in this ball game. First off by Jalen Daniels, 
where he fumbled the ball on the one yard line with KU bounding to score its first points of the game. And oh, that was just a stupid fumble. And that gave TCU a chance to go 99 yards and end up scoring on that drive. Also, Jason Bean, who I'll talk about later, uh, he threw a boneheaded interception right to a TCU defender. No receiver in coverage whatsoever. And it was just a lob throw to him and it was just, ugh. But the ones that really stick out to me was KU's third down conversion rate as they were five of 14. And yeah, it's getting worse and worse by the week in terms of third down efficiency. And also, lo and behold, even though we had less penalties in this game, penalties kicked our butts. Five penalties for 45 yards, while TCU only had one. One penalty for five yards, and it was a false start. That's why the refs were so important in this game, especially late, because TCU, in my mind, and in a lot of people's mind, should have had more. There was multiple miss pass interference calls that they should have had. They had a running into the defenseless returner that they should have got that one and they missed that one completely. But what can I do? I, all I can do just do is moan and cry about it because those calls didn't go our way. But penalties killed us. So hopefully that can be fixed as we are already through the halfway point of KU season and hopefully that gets fixed in the second half of the regular season. But with that said, those are my negatives. Now, there are a few guys before I give my player of the game that I do want to give honorable mentions to. And the first one is Devin Neal, who actually did pretty well for himself. 15 carries, 88 yards, didn't score. But it was good to see that Devin Neal kind of got back into things and, you know, was getting the yards that he well deserves. And... I believe he's now up to 300, maybe 400 yards now for the season. So pretty impressed. Uh, I could have gave it to Mason Fairchild as well. Three catches for 80 yards and an average of 26.7 yards per catch, along with a touchdown. And then Luke Grimm is another good example. Six catches, 73 yards, and a score. Also was really close to giving it to Quentin Skinner. Four catches for 98 yards and two scores. But there's a guy that I really want to give it to because the dude deserves it. And that's Jason Bean. My gosh, he had the worst timing in the world to come into this ball game with KU down three at this point. And with Jalen Daniels getting hurt, in comes Jason Bean. And he went off. Jason Bean on the day, 16 of 24 for 262 yards, four touchdowns, and an interception. Now, the interception was really boneheaded, but there was a few of his touchdowns that deserve second peaks, and that's what I'm going to take a look at. And both of those were passes to Quentin Skinner because he made some incredible catches. So with that, I'm going to play him back-to-back. -back. So here is the first of Quentin Skinner's touchdown passes from Jason Bean. Then the second one, which honestly in my mind should be an SC top 10 nominee because, oh my gosh, how did he keep his leg in in that last one to tie the game with like four and a half minutes left? is insane so here's the second touchdown but yeah jason bean obviously deserves it because he played his heart out and wanted to keep this game in kansas's favor so yeah jason bean's my player of the game now, I'm not going to give my player who needs to improve to Jalen Daniels due to the circumstances of his injury, but he would probably deserve it at this point. But 
I'm a good guy and I'm not going to do that. So with that said, I'm going to give my player who needs to improve to Kai Thomas because he saw playing time. There was times that he should have been able to get creases and it just didn't happen. Thomas finished the game with six carries for 19 yards and no scores. An average of 3.2 yards per carry. Yikes. I just don't know at this point. Do you redshirt him? Because there's points where I think he needs to improve everything because he's not been able to slip through the cracks of a defense and break through for like seven, eight yards. And it's showing because all he can pick really pick up is one, two, or three at best. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, he kind of gets the momentum and looks better and, you know, things will look up for him. But for right now, my player who needs to improve is obviously Kai Thomas. And that's going to do it for my review of KU versus TCU. Again, the final score, TCU 38, Kansas 31. Leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and push that notification bell. Tell your friends about these videos. And I should see you again for the next review as the Hawks travel down to Norman, Oklahoma to take on the Oklahoma Sooners. But until then, have a good day. Never ever bring anxiety to the field house. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.